There's huge interest across the world in telehealth, using digital technologies to transform the ways in which healthcare is provided to make it more accessible and efficient. This is particularly relevant to long-term health conditions. As populations get older, more people have chronic conditions. We need to find ways to help people look after themselves without relying on doctors. But despite all this enthusiasm for telehealth, evidence that it's actually effective and cost-effective is very limited. Although some interventions, such as home blood pressure monitoring and some online self-help programmes seem to be effective, there have been few studies based on using these digital technologies in combination to provide health care in a new way in a large-scale, real-life setting. So we designed a new service called the Healthline Service, based on all the evidence about what seems most likely to work, and we tested it in patients with high cardiovascular risk. That means patients who are at high risk of having a heart attack or stroke. These are very common problems which cause a lot of preventable deaths. Using computerised scripts, health advisors worked with patients to identify their health goals and then supported them to use online programmes via the internet to monitor and improve their health. The advisors, who didn't have clinical qualifications, followed guidelines to see if the patients were on the best drug treatments and checked if they were actually taking their drugs. They used proven psychological techniques to motivate patients to improve their health, for example by giving up smoking or losing weight. If patients had high blood pressure, they were given a home blood pressure monitor and encouraged to log their readings on a website, which gave them feedback about whether their blood pressure was too high and needed more treatment. We tested the Healthline service in people aged between 40 and 75 years old who had more than a 20% risk of having a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years and who also had, a modifiable, had modifiable risk factors such as high blood pressure, obesity, smoking or high cholesterol. We did a randomised controlled trial designed to assess the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of the Healthline service. 641 people took part from 42 general practices in three different parts of England. Half the people were randomly assigned to get the new Healthline service in addition to usual care from their GP, while the other half just got usual GP care. Our main measure of success, or our primary outcome, was the number of people who maintained or improved their cardiovascular risk after 12 months. That's a useful indicator because unless you improve your health, your risk increases after 12 months just because you're a year older. So what did we find? The headline finding was that slightly more of the people in the health lines group maintained or reduced their cardiovascular risk. Our best estimate was that we needed to provide the health line service to 13 people for one of them to benefit. But because the difference in risk between the health lines group and the usual care group was small, it's, it's possible it was just due to chance. The health lines group had small improvements in their blood pressure and their weight, but not in their levels of cholesterol or smoking. People in the health lines group were more likely to improve their diet and to do more physical activity. They were more likely to take their medication. They felt that care was more accessible and they felt more satisfied with their treatment. So what does it all mean? There's been a lot of hype about telehealth, as if it's a magic bullet that's going to solve the problem of how to provide more health care to more people within limited resources. Our results suggest it's not that simple. Telehealth interventions might provide small benefits for some people. Of course technology improves over time and there are many forms of telehealth and our results are promising enough to suggest it's worth pursuing the approach further. And intriguingly we did an economic analysis which showed that even though the benefits were small the Healthline service was still cost effective. That's because a low cost intervention that leads to even a small reduction in the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke is worthwhile. We'll publish more details about the economic evaluation soon. If you'd like to know more, please read the full paper about this trial on bmj.com or go to the Healthline's website where you can find lots more information about the Healthline service and our research programme, including further results as we publish them. I'm Chris Salisbury. Thank you for listening.